Good morning and welcome to the worship service, the online worship service for First United Methodist Church of South Charleston, West Virginia for August the 23rd of 2020. We are glad you are with us today, no matter where you are. Now please join us in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We belong to God. When we feel overwhelmed, God is on our side. When we are afraid, God will keep us safe. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Blessed be the Lord. Dear God, school's different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray, so that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fills his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the overwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all on the ground is sinking sand, all on the ground is sinking when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all on the ground is sinking sand, all on the ground is sinking sand. Today's scripture lessons come from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 7 through 15, and also Psalm 4. When you pray, don't pour out a flood of empty words as the Gentiles do. They think that by saying many words, they'll be heard. Don't be like them, because your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray like this. Our Father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. 
Forgive us the ways we have wronged you, just as we also forgive those who have wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sins. And now Psalm 4. Answer me when I cry out, my righteous God. Set me free from my troubles. Have mercy on me. Listen to my prayer. How long, you people, will my reputation be insulted? How long will you continue to love what is worthless and go after lies? Selah knows this. The Lord takes personal care of the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I cry out to him. So be afraid and don't sin. Think hard about it in your bed and weep over it. Selah, bring righteous gifts and offerings and trust the Lord. Many people say we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of your face has left us, Lord. But you have filled my heart with more joy than when their wheat and wine are everywhere. I will lie down and fall asleep in peace, because you alone, Lord, let me live in safety. Hello. If you're an old timer like me, you might remember this little Coach Berry hymn that we used to sing out of at my church. We used it on Sunday nights. Uh, there's a lot of good hymns in here. I'd like to do one called My Savior's Love, and I hope you like it. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. Today we continue our series on the Lord's Prayer, and we are looking particularly at petitionary prayer. But before I get into the sermon, I just want to touch a little bit on some of the things that happen during our worship service. Many of you know that we record these beforehand, but we produce them as a live production on Sunday morning. 
so that people can make comments and be a part of the service. And I appreciate that, and sometimes I wish you would give me just a little bit more than hi and where you're from. Maybe a comment once in a while, and maybe today, if I could give you a question, maybe you could shoot some answers to us that we could all share as the sermon goes along. When I say, give me prayer, what comes to mind for you? When I say a give me prayer, what comes to mind for you? Shoot us some answers across the chat room. You know, asking God for things is good and right, but our requests need to be positioned correctly and balanced by the other insights that we see in the Lord's Prayer. Now, we should ask boldly because of who we're asking. We should ask what, for the knowledge that we are sinful and may not know exactly what to ask, but we still should ask with confidence, knowing that our prayers will be heard by our Father because of Jesus Christ. The petition of the Lord's Prayer that is most appealing to us is, Give us today our daily bread. Now, it's not hard to see that this, at this particular point, becomes a gimme prayer. This is the type of prayer where we ask God to provide for us. Now, most people's prayers and their lives of prayer consist only of the gimme prayers. They hijack that one particular clause out of its proper context. Now, you need to notice that this particular petitionary prayer is smack dab in the middle of the Lord's Prayer. And it's important not to rush past the first few clauses of the prayer, because they rightly position the request for daily bread. First, we dwell on our Father in heaven, and that reminds us of who we're coming to with all of our requests. This should instill incredible confidence in us. Now, the famous hymn writer John Newton wrote, Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring. For his grace and power are such, none can ever ask too much. Now, when we dwell on the clauses, hallowed be your name and your kingdom come, we quickly realize that there is something wrong both externally in the world around us and internally in our own hearts. We have not hallowed God's name as we should have. We've not lived in accordance with the kingdom's values, nor has the world around us. This helps us to see that even our asking needs to be healed somewhat. Now, when we dwell on who we are asking, it transforms us in such a way that what we ask becomes very powerful. We see that we are praying to our Father. Now, this isn't some genie that we rub a bottle and we get a number of wishes. It doesn't mean that we don't ask, and sometimes we get what we ask for. But we don't always have the wisdom to ask for the right things to begin with. Now, a good illustration of this would be what would happen if an earthly father is confronted by a child that's asking him for something. Now, children consistently, whether they are children of sons and daughters or are children of grandchildren, they consistently continually ask for things that probably aren't all that good for them. Dad, can I have some of this candy was a regular petition I would hear as we were checking out of a grocery store. And the answer that I would give and what most fathers would give is no, not right now, because it will ruin your supper. Now, the father has a little bit of wisdom there, and he knows that his foolish young child is just asking for something that he has become spoiled with. But with all the sugar and everything else, it can get to be a little wild come supper time. 
Now, a good parent knows that the worst thing in the world would be for the child to spoil their dinner and perhaps even become sick later that night because of all the sugar. Well, you don't always give your children everything they ask for. And in a similar way, God the Father's wisdom is so much higher than our own that we should be able to trust him when there are those occasions when he says no. After all, he has our best interest in mind, and this requires some humility on our part. The last thing that we need to mediate on and think about before we rush into the give us prayers that God is God and we are not. Our Father in heaven, God is God in heaven and on earth, and he has the ability to answer any one of our prayers. And this is what brings glory to his name. But God delights in our asking him because it displays that we still have a dependence upon him. Listen to God speaking to Israel in Isaiah. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of his earth. Now God is saying, give me no rest. Don't stop bothering me. I love to hear your request both day and night. Be persistent in what you're asking for, for I am listening. Now, in this regard, the difference between a human father and our heavenly father becomes very, very apparent. The question asking of a three-year-old can wear down the patience of a parent very, very quickly. This is because as parents, we're finite. We can only take so long and eventually we're going to be wore down. But God, our Heavenly Father, is an infinite God. His love is abundant. It's a wellspring that will never run dry. Don't stop bothering me. Finally, when discussing petitionary prayer, we should address the topic of unanswered prayers. Now, this is a difficult subject. It's one that takes a great deal of pastoral wisdom and care, and sometimes it takes all we can do to explain why some prayers are answered and some are not. But when we are squared up with the knowledge that we have a God that is abundant in the Lord's Prayer, we can see that really there aren't any unanswered prayers. Now, we have to realize that there are three possible answers. Now, maybe we get a yes, and we get what we ask for. Maybe it was in line with everything else that needed to be done. Maybe it was to the benefit of the entire community. For whatever reason, we get a yes. But then occasionally we get a no. Sometimes God knows our well-being and what we desire may not be exactly the best thing for us at the time. And sometimes God has to say no. But more likely than not, the most common answer that God gives is not yet. Sometimes God needs for us to be more prepared in the way that we ask for prayer. And we may need to be prepared in the way that we're willing to accept the answers that God gives. So sometimes it's wait or not yet. But these, these are all answers. We can see that some of them are kind of harsh. And if you're one that's in suffering or in pain and you're asking for relief, well, sometimes God isn't as quick to answer as we think he should be. Tim Keller points out that David's psalms show us the confidence that David had 
when God heard him and would answer him whenever he called. In Psalm 4, he writes, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now that is incredible confidence. David has his experiences with God as his basis for God's faithfulness to answer his prayers. But we have even more. Keller goes on to write, We who live after Christ and who believe the gospel, however, have even greater resources for the assurance that God will hear our petitions. We know God will answer us when we call on him because one terrible day he did not answer Jesus when he called. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane that the cup of suffering on the cross be taken from him. And yet his request was turned down. On the cross itself, Jesus cried, My God! But he was forsaken. Sinners deserve to have their prayers go unanswered. But Jesus, on the other hand, was the only human being in history who deserved to have all of his prayers answered. Why? Well, the answer is in the gospel. God treated Jesus as we deserved. He took our penalty so that when we believe in Him, God can then treat us as Jesus deserved. The final answer to all of our prayers when we leave this world, if we believe in Jesus Christ, is today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Thank you, church, for continuing to be the financial support that you are. Your reoccurring gifts that come in each month enable us to continue the various programs and outreach ministries of First United Methodist Church. We continue to do our fair share among the conference and our world benevolences. Let us pray. Caring God, you call us together as your people. Now transform us with your love. Transform our hearts that we may love generously. Transform our eyes that we may see your grace. Transform our hands that we may serve others. Transform our spirits that we may be the body of Christ, gathered to worship and sent out to serve. Bless the gifts and the givers and all the outreach that they represent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I'd like to share with you some names that have been added to our prayer list for this week. The family of Nancy Harder, Park and Lauren Chapman, Chris Young, Jean Wiseman, Barney Lilly, the family of Janie Moran, and Joy Tomlin. Let us pray. Caring God, you call us to be the body of Christ, to live in community, to care for one another, to use our different gifts, Instead of working to sustain community, 
we sometimes follow our own desires. Instead of trusting in your care, we think we can do it alone. Forgive us our neglect of others. Give us obedient spirits that we may care for one another and depend upon your love and use the gifts for your gospel. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and sustain the names that we lift before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Resist the powers that use people. Hear the cries of the weak. Dare to work for justice. Know that God, source, word, and spirit, is your help and will keep you safe. And will bring you a new life. You are are blessed by God and sent to serve. Go now with his peace, blessing, and understanding. Amen.